This is a Photoshop tutorial. How to use brushes with filters and save them to actions. First thing to do, create a brush. So I'm just going to use a shape for that. So make sure you've got the shape top, top option there. Using the rectangle tool, fill nothing and stroke black and set it to about 18 pixels. Whatever you wish. And just drag and you've got a rectangle there. So you've got a white rectangle. So now what you can do, go to edit and define a brush preset. So that brush is now stored. That shape is now stored. And what you can do, you can go to the brush settings. To see the panels, go to the window menu so you can see the various settings there. And there's the sampled brush down the bottom. What you can do, you can now tweak it. Go to the brush settings so you can Maybe add some size jitter so you can vary the size so it makes it very small or very big. You can also set the angle jitter as well so you can make it rotate around randomly. You can also go to the color dynamics and you can set, say, the midpoint for the hue. So you've got size jitter there. And you can change other settings as well if you wish. You can maybe go for scattering. I'm just going to go to color dynamics now. And so you can set the foreground, background color in the middle. You, of course, can vary the foreground and background color. You can also set the hue jitter to full on 100%. Also, what you can do, you can just going to change the angle jitter. I just remembered I hadn't changed the angle. So once you've done that, what you can do, you can go to the right side menu. And you can save that as a new brush preset. So all the settings, the color, as well as the size, all the shape dynamics are all stored. Give it a name. I'm just going to call it color brush. Click OK. Now you can use that with actions. I'm also going to create another brush. You might create three, five hundred, hundreds and hundreds of brushes if you wish. This will work with all your brushes, but it's nice to create another brush. I'm going to create a very basic brush stroke. Again, very similar to this one, that one. So this time I'm just going to go for an ellipse tool and I'm going to use the same settings for the shape and I'm just going to drag and create some circles or dots. And vary the size up to you, of course. Make small ones, large ones, Whatever. And you can vary, of course, the size of the stroke as well. Maybe change the color of the stroke. What you can do, edit and define brush preset. Click OK. And that's stored again in the brushes. Well, what you can do, you can go to the brush settings. And again, you can do exactly the same as before. You can set all the various size dynamics. So size jitter there. As well, don't need the angle jitter, but you could use the angle jitter if you're reasonable. Of course, it's... Uh, and also you can maybe go for scattering. So you can spread it out a bit more. Again, color dynamics. If you don't change that, the color dynamics, what will happen, it will just basically just turn completely red or completely green, depending on the foreground color. And again, you go to the right side menu and you can store that away. So set the hue jitter to 100%, that's a key thing. Give it a name, click OK. So you've now got both those brushes. You can delete the old ones if you wish as well. And you could create like lots more brushes, up to you. But what I want to do is I want to now apply it. But I'm going to save it as an action. So there's the panels, actions, brushes, brush settings, all via the window menu. Make certain you select the color brush one or color brush two, one of them anyway. Go to the actions. Go to the right side menu and go to a new action. Give it a name if you wish. Record. Now with the current, now this one's creates random colors. 
just apply it over the entire document. Do it quickly. No elegance here. And you can see the size as well as obviously the color is random. Does make sense you fill the whole lot. You don't have to, of course. Doesn't have to be done. Or just I'm filling the entire document with that colorful brush. So once you've done it, you can see now it's stored in the action of it. Now for this, go to the right side menu. You can see, make certain you've got the tool recording set on. That needs to be set on in the actions. Now go to stylize and go for oil paint in the filter menu and set the values to fairly high and click OK. You can apply it once, twice, three times, just gives it a nice smeary effect. And that will also be recorded into the action. See there, the action there. And again, you can run it again if you wish. Filter and oil paint. So you've got two of the oil paints. Once you've done that, go to filter menu and you can use, of course, any of the other filters, but I'm going to give it some depth. So filter, render and light in effects. Now, this is one weak area, I think, in Photoshop. I would love to see some better sort of 3D depth features in the application. Lighting, along with the oil paint, lighting effects is really it. Painter has got apply surface texture, which I love. This, I don't think, is really anywhere as good. And what you can do, you can rotate the lighting around. And the key one here is I'm going for infinite. I'm going for an infinite light. And you can change the settings. But the key one is right at the bottom, texture. Set it to red or the green channel or blue channel and set the height. Set it maybe to like 22, 23, whatever you want to set it to. And you can modify the, gl the gloss as well as metallic. So you can get a really nice sort of depth to your design. Again, it doesn't really give, I think, particularly the best of depth features. It's okay. Sometimes it works better maybe in the green channel. Depends really on the colors, of course. Click OK. So now you've got your design there. What you do, you can see again, that's been recorded to the action. What you can do also, you can go to filters, stylize and oil paint. Apply that a couple of times if you wish. Click OK. And of course you can apply any other filter as well. It doesn't have to be oil paint. Also we can do image menu adjustments and I'm going to just go for vibrance. You could of course add color lookup and many others. But it really makes that stand out now. So you've got your design. And what you can do, you can go to the right side menu and you can stop the recording. Or you can go down the bottom and stop the recording. So that's as much as I want. So you can go top there and stop recording. As I said, make certain you've got the tool recording on. That's a key thing. Otherwise, the brush data will not be recorded. So stop recording. So now it's recorded. Now what you can do, you can use it, that action, with any other brush. It doesn't have to be like the one I've just created, the rectangle or the dots. Could be, of course, any brush. But I'm just going for that sort of nice hollow. I'm just going to quickly apply it using that dot brush that I created earlier. Now select the action. Go there on the right side menu and play. And then we'll just quickly, rapidly create all of those circles all across the document. And we'll gain multiple colors. Also, we'll do the oil paint as well as the lighting effect. And there you have it. Very quick and slightly garish, colorful design. I'm just going to use another brush now. Color brush three, which is just basically rectangles, but multiple copies of. And again, that's applied. So you can see each time that the end result is slightly different, of course. There's another design. And you can maybe use like star designs, polygons. 
just going to fill that with white and use a different brush. So select a different brush. This one's one that I created with Curvature Tool, just to create a very couple of lines in the curve. Again, click play and run it. So you can see the design there for in the, the entire document or near enough all the document. Again, the oil paint and a lighting effect applied. And of course, what you can do, you can always then, once you've finished, you can go and apply some other filters. Now they're not part of the recording, but you can just quickly drag things, modify, liquefy, and distort the design. So you don't end up with similar designs each and every time. So you can quickly create some variations. Click OK. And of course, once you've done that, what you can do, you can go to the image menu and maybe use adjustments, maybe color look up, sepia, black and white, blue tone, etc. So you can quickly create thousands of different background designs or maybe overlays, etc. Backgrounds may be two shape designs. So there's another adjustment applied there. Hope you found this tutorial of interest. Please subscribe to the Graphic Extra channel, always adding new tutorials about Photoshop, Illustrator, Finity Photo, and many others. Please add some comments, always appreciated. A dislike or a like. Thank you much.